Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, I, I think that uh, in my last video when I said that I was going to get the car out and uh, do the honing, that's exactly what I meant, is I had to get the car out to get to the honing machine. But I think a lot of people have seen this and kind of wonder about it. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, maybe I ought to just kind of go over what the deal is with the car and uh, give you a little bit of what's going on with it and what I, what I need to do yet. It's, it's kind of work in progress. I've actually been working on it for about, I'd say, 12 to 15 years. It was uh, on a rotisserie for probably three years getting all of the lower you know the bottom end repaired and and everything of course I was working then so it you know I wasn't able to spend a lot of time on it but it's uh, it's not a, it's not a hot rod it's uh, it's more like a uh, I don't know maybe they call them resto mods where it's you know it's not a high performance thing at all it's taking a later model powertrain and putting it in an old car so that it looks cool, looks retro, but is more in line with today's cars. Except that it's really not because it's uh, the, the donor was from an 88 uh, Mercury Marquis. Uh, but really it's just the powertrain and there's still a lot of work needs to be done to this. I'm hoping this summer to get a little bit more of it complete and I've, I'm getting ready to sell another car so I can get this one out of the garage in the winter time so I can get my uh, other escape in. Because when it really gets cold, sometimes it's, uh, those, those cars don't like to, to start when they set out all night and all day too if you don't go anywhere. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at on that. Uh, I want to at least be able to get this one back in cold storage and uh, get it out of here so, you know, if I need to clear the area to do some painting or something, I can, uh, I can do that without uh, having this one here that I just don't want it to set outside when it's snowing. So let me kind of go over what's going on with that. I know a lot of people that are interested in old bikes or are also interested in old cars. That's I am too. It's uh, at a, about 30 year time span maybe that I was going uh, kind of trying to relive my childhood and I was uh, picking up old cars and restoring them and I did a lot of them real quick and this one here has been the kind of the last one and I've just really lost interest in it but I just need to kind of finish it up so I can move on here. The, uh, the car itself is a 1968 Ford Torino. It's, uh, this is actually a Torino. It, uh, it shares the body with the Fairlane cars and this is what they call the coupe. Uh, I actually had a fastback that I sold about five years ago. It was uh, red and it, uh, you know, the, the fastback, of course, uh, the, the roof line comes all the way back here. And I really like those cars except for driving them. You cannot see out the back for, for nothing. And I just, I really like this body style better because it's, it's just, it's just cleaner to me. It's easier to drive. And, you know, it's just, I, just a personal thing, I guess. But there's nothing fancy about this. And I have got the door panels in here. And I've got the carpet in. But I still need to put seat covers. You can see the dash laying here in the back. I've still got to uh, put a shifter... I've, I've kind of made a shift set up so I can shift the AOD transmission that I put in it. But it's not perfect, so I'm going to use this low car thing. I think that is going to work better. But anyhow, it's, uh, it's been all completely redone except for the seats. 
I've still got a little bit of wiring to sort out and some ducting. This was a non-AC car and I turned it into an AC car. So I've got the uh, ducting to finish hooking up and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty fancy actually. It, it's what they called a Torino Brome. Uh, it's got a factory tack and uh, of course I'm not gonna, I don't think I can make it work because of uh, the electronic ignition and everything that's going on with this car but I'm still not sure. Anyhow, uh, it runs, it starts. Uh, I'll fire it up for you. It's, uh, like I say, this is nothing fancy. This was, I was kind of building for the wife. But what I did was uh, I had an 88 Mercury Marquee that was uh, factory you know they they were fuel injected and this one here it's a 302 fuel injected everything about it is Ford except for uh, uh, some of the some of the stuff that I had to use to uh, uh, shoehorn it in here it was pretty difficult about getting around the factory uh, power brake system uh, a friend of mine his son, we were talking about it one day, and you know, you can turn all this stuff, uh, you can turn this plenum around so it's on the other side. But I had the same problem. I was running into uh, this area over here, and it, I don't know, it's been so, while, so long since I've done this, I can't remember all the particulars, but I, I found that it was gonna be easier to work it this way. And his son told me about this elbow that, that is on the Explorer. And that's I went out to the salvage yard and picked one up, or maybe I got one from, from them, I can't remember. I think I did. <clears throat> and we put this on and just, we got our elbow on here and that cleared just fine. So everything's working okay with that. I, I've got, uh, I had to use a Mustang uh, accelerator pedal and I got a TV cable for the AOD from Summit Racing got all that hooked up uh, transmission shifts good it had a uh, an old radiator in it and it would have cost me as much to have it record as just to buy another one and like I say I'm not looking for originality on this car the grill actually uh, a lot of you probably have noticed that that doesn't look right on here and this is actually out of a ranchero same year so these two uh, pieces here and the grill is the ranchero and that's all metal stainless steel instead of the uh, uh, expanded steel looking piece that goes in there originally and the wheels are just the uh, uh, Oh, I forget what they call those, but they're kind of the custom wheel of the time. Uh, they just have the, the hubcaps, the trim rings, and the little uh, chrome doodads that go around the holes there. And I painted it the same color as the car. But anyhow, that's, uh, that's kind of that thing. Let me, uh, let me start this thing up. And of course I had to put... Uh, electric fuel pump so you can kind of hear that and it really runs nice it goes down the road very well and uh, shifts it does everything it's supposed to do it's just that the shifter is not a real uh, friendly thing. See, it idles down. It, once it, it starts up and then it idles down to where it needs to be, just like it should be. And let me show you what I've... I put the... Uh, still a lot of parts in here. Uh, this is the brain 
or the uh, oh what do they call that uh, now it's it's the brain as far as I'm concerned this is out of the mercury and you know so everything is matched to it and I put in uh, my fuse box and everything in here and all these cables wires that are for the engine management all go under the carpet all the way to the front so everything that is required to make it run is back here this is your fuel turnover switch so if you get a if you in an accident and you turn it over that's since we put the uh, uh, electronic fuel pump on it so that will shut off if you turn it over and I've just got a lot of parts left here and mo most of this is probably just stuff that's left over and doesn't even need to be in here but uh, a lot of the trim yet for the for the uh, inside and I don't have the correct color so I'm gonna have to try to dye this stuff but there's just a lot of a lot of little things that need to be done it's just it's been a lot of work and I, I'm just getting kind of tired you know the bikes are easier to deal with and uh, I just wish this one was done so I didn't have to worry about it anymore but you can see it just purrs like a kitten I don't know that you could I do have dual exhaust on it I think you can hear it there it's got, I mean, I like them to sound good, but I don't want them loud and obnoxious either, you know. But that's kind of the story about the the 68 Torino it just needs a little bit of work yet uh, I still need to cut and buff it and finish the interior with the seats and uh, I got to get it aligned up and get the uh, the shift kit put in it and that's it should be good to go but it's it's a you know if you worked on it all day uh, you're probably working or looking at probably around uh, a month or so to finish it up. I just don't know whether I've, I've got that much uh, interest in it. So I just do a little bit at a time. But again, that's the real, when I said I need to pull the car out, I need to pull the car out so I can get to the honing machine here. That was the whole thing about doing that. I... I really would like to go out and uh, uh, drive it and I will as soon as I get it I don't even have it uh, tagged yet but you know it's uh, and you know before I put the like the Ford trim on the side and the the badges on the uh, uh, the pillar back here at the back uh, there's a Torino badge that goes here and uh, I don't yeah we've got a Ford badge or the Ford letters that go here and you've got the windshield wipers and the Ford letters up here so any of that stuff I'm just waiting on that until I cut and buff the paint and then I'll uh, I'll go ahead and start assembling all that that's the, I guess the biggest uh, drawback right now for me is the amount of effort it takes to do that and then uh, you know I, I kind of have to do it outside or at least with the door open so uh, you know I can use the water to wash everything off with but really it's it's just really close to being ready to go it just got some finishing touches you know the the seats the seat covers are probably the most expensive thing left and you know those those are probably close to a thousand dollars maybe a little more for a set from uh oh gosh i don't even know who's got them now whether 
it's uh hmm, i can't remember it's been too long i've just been that kind of out of the the uh, uh dearborn classics used to have all that stuff i think they're still in business uh there's another outfit out of virginia i think and uh I can't remember the name of them, but uh, they've got a lot of old Ford parts. And I think a, a couple of these have merged. They've gone, you know, one of them went out of business and merged with another one or whatever. But anyhow, it's, uh, that's the, the thing that's gonna take the most time is the cutting and the buffing. And then I can get all the little trim and everything put back on it, get it down to the alignment shop, and uh, finish up the interior and then it's good to go but there again that's uh that was the whole deal is i had to get the car out to get to the honing machine over here and when it's really cold and nasty uh, and i need to do a honing i've got to move some equipment up front so i can move the car up and you know the whole the whole thing is i've got to, i've got to sell one so I can get this one out of here in the winter time. Uh, I've got I've got several I just need to turn loose of, but it it hasn't been a real good climate for uh, selling cars with. Uh, uh, now I just have to say with uh, some of the powers to be right now, uh, they're just. You know, taxation is all they're thinking about. And, uh, you know, when you're, when you've put so much money into a car, restoring them, the last thing you want to do is give 20% of that to the government. You know, because you're not, every, all your labor and everything, nobody's counting that. And at the end of the day, you just lose so much. You lose money on a restoration whether it's a car or a motorcycle, uh, you just, you can never get back what you put in. You just can't do it. And it's, uh, it's got to be pretty much a labor of love or if you've got to have somebody that has deep pockets that uh, can afford to do that. But, you know, what? I've kind of gone away from full restorations on bikes and I'm really sick and tired of the car stuff. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's big, it's bulky. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> if you want to look at it this way, I, if I get rid of a car, I got room for 16 more bikes, you know, because that, I've got storage room for them. But anyhow, that's, I just want to, you know, I have a lot of interest in that car over the last couple of years, and I really haven't, said much about it and other than it's uh, a work in progress and i just thought maybe i ought to explain what the what the deal is and uh, the other day when i said i need to you know it was a nice day i need to get the car out so i can get to the honing machine everybody first thought you know i'm going for a ride and i wished it was that way and i would take you on the ride but right now, all I need to do is get it out so I can get to the honing machine so I can take care of Ed's cylinder. And it's, it's almost like summertime for us. It was 35 below zero just uh, about a week and a half ago. And that was without the wind chill. The wind chill, it was closer to 70 below. And here we are. Uh, yesterday was 65 degrees. Today's, I think, going to be 64, and we're looking at the rest of the week, very similar. Uh, this is not normal for here. The Lord has really blessed us this year as far as the weather goes. And uh, it's, you know, we, we know what normal is here, and this is not normal, but we're sure going to enjoy it. So, hey, you know, kind of an unconventional video, but just a short one to let you know uh, kind of the backstory about this and yes it's drivable but it's really not ready yet uh, it just just needs a little uh, 
you know, some knit noy finishing up stuff and get it titled and all that and then, then we'll be on the road. But the big thing is I need to get rid of one so I have room to park that, not in here. So hey, thanks for going along on the ride, even though we didn't go anywhere. See you next video.